giant cupcake. Brian was eating his lunch. Mum, have we got any donuts? He mumbled with a mouthful of jam sandwich. Brian liked anything with jam. Biscuits, donuts, cakes, but donuts were his favourite. Please don't talk with your mouth full, Brian, said Mum. And no, we haven't, I'm afraid. But I haven't had a jam donut in ages and you know they're my favourite. They may well be your favourite, Brian, but they are a treat and you need to deserve a treat. And doing things like painting and tying your dad's favourite t-shirt to the garden pole to make a pirate's flag or making it snow in the bathroom with the talcum powder is not the way to earn a treat. It did look great though, thought Brian, just as if it had snowed indoors. But his mum had moaned about the white powder footprints that were trod all through the house. And she had made him help clear it up too, in the bathroom, which took ages. There was a film of white powder over everything, including the windowsill, floor, sink, taps and the shelves where Mum's toiletries and her favourite candles were on. Hmm, good job I hadn't used the toothpaste, he mused to himself. He had thought about squeezing the tube like a tube of paint and writing B-R-I. A-N, in big letters, in the bath. It would have looked so cool. So, tidy your room, said Mum, and maybe we can make something yummy later. (sighs) Brian plodded upstairs to his bedroom. Sure enough, it was a mess. There were clothes, toys, books and pencils all over the floor, bits of puzzle, Lego and... Oh, what's that sticking to my sock? Ah, a cola bottle. I thought I had one left somewhere. He slowly pulled it off and ate it. As far as sweets were concerned, cola bottles were Brian's favourite. Brian started off well... He picked up the pens and pencils up off the floor and even climbed up the ladder to his bunk bed to get the ones that were under his pillow and put them in his pencil case. He looked around the room. It was still so messy. This is going to take ages, he moaned. He picked up an armful of clothes, opened his wardrobe and stuck it in the bottom very quickly and closed the door. Brian looked around the room but he could not see the tin for his Lego anywhere. He picked out the bricks that were in his bed, on his shelf and on the floor. Where can I put them? Where can I put them? He pulled open his underwear drawer and threw them all in there and shut the drawer. Brian looked around the room. Yeah, that's much better, he said to himself. Just then, Mum called upstairs. Brian, come down when you've finished tidying your room. Brian hurtled down the stairs. All done. You can even see my carpet now, he said. Oh, well done, said Mum. Now, I have looked through the cupboard... And I have the ingredients to make jam donuts, interrupted Brian. No, said Mum. A cupcake. What, only one? exclaimed Brian. Well, yes, I don't have the cupcake tins to make lots or the paper cases. But I do have a large cake tin. So I thought... We could make one giant cupcake. Ah, Brian liked the sound of that. Well, can we put jam in it? Yes, answered Mum, I'm sure we can add a little jam. 
they both got busy baking the giant cupcake. And Brian was amazed at how big it had got when Mum had taken it out of the oven. We need to let it cool and then we can decorate it, she said. Don't forget the jam, said Brian. Yes, OK, said Mum. You go and play and I'll call you in a while. After watching some TV, Mum called him back out to the kitchen. He climbed up on the kitchen stool and saw Mum had got lots of cake decorations out. There was icing, jelly diamonds, hundreds and thousands, chocolate buttons and marshmallows. Wow, this looks great, said Brian. But where's the jam? Well, we can cut the cake in half and sandwich some jam in the middle, said Mum. But Mum, then it won't be a surprise. You know, like in a donut, you don't know where the jam is until you bite it, moaned Brian. Well, OK, she said. I don't have the syringe tool needed, but maybe we can make a tiny hole and pour a little squeezy jam into it. And then we can pop a chocolate over the hole before icing it. That way it will still be a surprise. Great, said Brian. Mum made a small hole in the cake with a skewer and allowed Brian to squeeze the jam bottle, pouring a little into the cake. Just then, Mum's mobile phone rang. I need to take this call. It's work, she said. Dip a chocolate button in a tiny amount of icing and pop it over the hole. Then you can add a few more chocolates if you like, so you don't know which ones hide in the jam. And then I will cover the whole cake in butter icing, and you can add some more decorations. Mum had gone out of the room to talk to her work colleague. Brian sniffed and looked at the cake. <laughs> That's definitely not enough jam, he thought. He made several more holes in the cake and poured more jam into it, squeezing until the squeezy jam bottle was completely empty. He covered the holes with the buttons, threw the empty bottle in the bin, got a cloth and wiped up some of the jam spills. Mum came back into the room. Wow, Brian! Tidied your room and helping tidy the kitchen all in the same day? I'm impressed. Now, let's get this cake covered and decorated because I need to get dinner on. Mum covered the whole of the giant cupcake in icing and Brian sprinkled the coloured hundreds and thousands, which are tiny little sweetie bits, over the top. A masterpiece! declared Brian. Now that's what I call a giant cupcake. Can I have a bit now? he asked, jumping up and down. Wait till Dad comes home first so you can show him. As soon as Dad came through the door, Brian was shouting, Dad, just come and look at the amazing giant cupcake we made. Wowzers, that is amazing. What's in it? Fruit? he asked. It's a surprise, said Brian. Mum handed Dad a cup of tea. OK, said Dad. Let's have a slice. Mum got a large sharp knife and cut into the cake. Before she even lifted up a slice, jam oozed out. But it didn't stop there. It kept on running. It poured over the worktop and dripped on the floor. Quick, move the cake. My work papers are there, said Dad. Mum grabbed the cake and lifted it into the air to move it to the other side of the kitchen. And as she did so, whoosh, splat! The bottom of the cake fell out and jam poured everywhere. It was like an explosion. It hit the floor and splattered everywhere. Up the cupboards and all over Mum's trousers and top. Mum was covered in red sticky jam and screaming about the mess. Dad was yelling, how much jam did you put in it? Not this much, 
said Mum. At that point, both parents turned and looked at Brian. I might have added a bit more while you were on the phone, he whispered. Well, you put so much in, it was too heavy for the cake to hold, his dad replied with a wry smile. Yes, it was like an upside down erupting volcano, wasn't it? Brian exclaimed. I wish you'd filmed it with your phone, Dad. Well, I'm glad you two think it's amusing, said Mum. I'm off for a shower and you two can both clean up this mess. Oh, I bet that's another day I won't get a donut, sighed Brian. The end. <laughs>